Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. In today's video as you can see we've got the test bench back out with the Chaintech motherboard and AMD Duran on it from the overclocking build off video that was a few videos back on the channel. As usual I'll drop a link down in the description if you want to check that out and see what it was all about. But the long and short of it is I've put this system together using parts that were fairly middle of the road for their time period and then I attempted to overclock each part of this system as much as I could. We did benchmarks before and after to see you know, how much of an improvement we'd managed to make. Now this AMD Duron, it's a 750 MHz CPU and I was only able to overclock it to 850 MHz. And my conclusion at the time was that I found that pretty disappointing. I seem to remember that these were much better overclockers than that and I was expecting, you know, a higher overclock out of it. So today, in this video, we're going to be following that up and we're going to be looking at six different things that may help us get higher overclocks out of this. We'll test each one in turn, see what difference it makes and if we manage to push it any further, we'll maybe benchmark again at the end and see what we get. So, what are the six different things that we're going to be looking at? Number one, rose tinted glasses. The idea that we remember the good things as being better than they actually were. Or maybe I'm just misremembering how good these CPUs were at overclocking. Number two, bad motherboard capacitors. Some of the power filtering caps on this motherboard are bulging, which suggests that they might be getting out of spec. Number three, the power supply that we're using is an old one, and maybe the power it's outputting is no longer within spec. Number four, not enough cooling on the CPU and maybe that's causing it to overheat and our overclocks to fail. Number five, maybe this is just a poor CPU for overclocking and this is as far as this one can go. Number six, maybe this is just a poor motherboard for overclocking and using a different one would give us better results. Okay so we've got everything else connected up now and as I said at the start, we've got the same motherboard, the same CPU, the same cooler, the same graphics card, the same hard disk as I had back in the overclocking build-off video. Right, let's start with number one on our list, and it's the old rose-tinted glasses. The idea that we remember the good things as perhaps even better than they actually were. And applying that to our CPU here, Am I remembering these things as better overclockers than they actually were? You know, maybe 100 megahertz overclock is what pretty much what these things actually did. Perhaps this idea that they were great overclockers and would overclock more than that is just in my mind rather than what they actually did. So to address that, let's turn to Google and all I'm going to do is Google the term AMD Duron 750 overclocking. So it's mid-April 2022 as I'm Googling this and as we can see we've got a number of articles from uh, different websites from around 20 years ago all on overclocking this Duron 750. We've got names like Anantech, Hexis.net, um, Tom's Hardware etc. All very different sites nowadays to what they were back then but all of them here with articles overclocking these Durons and they all seem to be getting up towards a gigahertz uh, overclock or in some cases even beyond that. And likewise, you know, have a look at the links for yourself. There's various forum threads linked here that you can see where there's various users also reporting overclocks on the Duron 750 in a similar sort of range, up to and over one gigahertz. So I don't think that it's just me with rose tinted glasses on, uh, you know, thinking that these things were better overclockers than what we got out of it. I think that generally they were, so I don't think that's his problem. Let's move on to point number two. Moving on to the next item on the list and it's bad capacitors. I said in the build off video that a few of the capacitors around the CPU socket here were starting to bulge a bit and that's typically an indication that they might be at the end of their life and you know no longer in the uh, spec that they should be. And as far as I'm aware all the capacitors around the CPU socket here, uh, there's 10 of them, they're all identical. These are for power filtering or power delivery to the CPU. And if it's not getting nice, clean, smooth power, that could be holding our overclock back. Now the eagle-eyed among you may be able to spot that I've already replaced these for nice new capacitors. 
They're all identical, all 2200 microfarad capacitors. And if these are a problem, these new caps uh, will eliminate that. I did test the bad ones that came off and two of the 10 that I replaced were outside their spec. So first, I'm just gonna boot up as we left it at the end of the last video and it should still be at its 850 megahertz overclock. And we should be able to see that on the screen here as soon as it wakes up. And yep, there we go, Duron 850 megahertz. And I'm now gonna change these dip switches to increase the multiplier to nine. And we'll boot up, see if it'll boot it to uh, that multiplier. Nope, so as you can see, it's just sat there. Yes, fans are spinning and whatnot, we're getting power, but no display output, not even getting any beeps from the PC speaker, so it's not happy at that. We'll change that back down to an 8.5 multiplier, and I think we can say that the bad capacitors on this motherboard were not our problem. Moving on to number three on the list, and it's the possibility of a bad PSU. And I don't mean bad as in the power supply is broken, I mean it clearly isn't, we've seen it run in this system. But I mean bad as in perhaps because it's old, it's out of spec. Perhaps we're getting a lot of noise, uh, you know, a lot of ripple on the DC output. So in other words, we're feeding the motherboard kind of dirty power as it were. And maybe it doesn't matter how good your motherboard is or your capacitors or your CPU or what, if you're putting dirty power into it, maybe that's holding our overclock back. Now this isn't the PSU that you saw in the build off video, that one's been used for something else. However, it is a PSU of the same age as the one used in the build off video and indeed it's an age appropriate PSU for these, uh, for these components. But maybe, you know, it could have dirty power on it due to its age, you know, just like the previous one did. So in order to solve that, we are going to use this brand new Silverstone ST70F. Um, it's new straight out of the box. Um, it's got plenty of current available on the sort of 3.3 and 5 volt rails, which is what these sorts of systems need. So I'll get this power supply disconnected, get this one hooked up just temporarily, and we'll see if this PSU makes any difference. Right, we're hooked up. Hopefully you can see from this braided cable here that this is from the uh, new PSU powering our motherboard. I've got it plugged into the hard disk as well down here. First, we'll boot up and just check the 850 megahertz setting. Yep, there it is, that's all working okay. I'll change the jumpers and we'll try again at the multiplier of nine. Okay, here goes. And exactly the same as before. We've got power, fans are spinning and everything. No video output on the screen, so that suggests we're just not getting anything out of the CPU. So we can cross that one off the list. I don't think the power supply was the problem. Okay, moving on to item number four on the list, and it's cooling. The idea that this heatsink and fan combo are not up to the job, and our processor's getting too hot and holding back our overclocks. Straight away, I'm gonna say I don't think that's the reason, because it's not the behavior I would expect to see from a system that's getting too hot. Typically for that, uh, you'd at least expect the CPU to boot, you'd probably get into Windows, and then once you started benchmarking and working the CPU hard, you know, running a benchmark, running a game, something like that, then typically it would crash, it would freeze up and hang because the CPU's got too hot and that's caused the crash. That's not the behavior you've seen here. We're just seeing that at higher multipliers, it doesn't boot at all. But just as a double check, I've got a thermocouple and it's poked right down into the middle of the heatsink on top of the CPU die and uh, or on top of the seat where the CPU die is underneath the heatsink. And that's plugged in here to the multimeter. You can see that's currently showing 33 degrees C. And I've gone into the BIOS because this is the easiest place to show it. And we can see that we're getting 30 degrees C there. There's a little variance between these two temperatures, which you'd expect as they've been measured 
in different places. The BIOS is measuring it using that little sensor in the bottom of the CPU socket, whereas we're measuring it from the other side on top of the heatsink. But the point is, both these temperatures are low. The heatsink, that's not even barely warm to the touch, and whilst I accept that the CPU isn't working hard right now, just sat here in the BIOS, it's still showing that um, these temperatures are low, the heat isn't holding us back, this thing's being cooled fine. So I think we can safely say that uh, heat or the heat sink, um, fine getting rid of that heat, that's not our problem with our overclocks and we need to move on to the next item. Okay, moving on to item number five on the list and it's the idea that uh, this CPU is just not a very good one, at least in terms of headroom when it comes to overclocking. Not all CPUs are created equal, some will be better than others and just because there's lots of evidence out there that um, a lot of durons did hit these higher overclocks, it doesn't guarantee that this one will. So to test that, I happen to have not just one, but two more AMD Durons, both 750 MHz chips. So what I'm going to do with these, I'll do the old pencil trick on the bridges, get them unlocked, and then we'll swap them into this board, and we'll see if we have any more luck overclocking these two as opposed to this one. Now, yes, all three CPUs could turn out to be poor overclockers, but the chances of three CPUs all being poor compared to just one, it's definitely less chance. So depending on what these do or don't do, it'll help to rule that either in or out as to whether that's our problem. Okay, we're ready to go with processor number two. I've left the multiplier at 8.5 to give us uh, 850 megahertz for two reasons. For one, we know it works with this setup. And for two, it'll check that I have joined all four bridges correctly and unlocked the processor. If not, it'd still be stuck at 750 and we're not gonna be able to overclock at all. So, here we go. And yep, straight away we can see that this one's booting okay at 850, so we'll switch it off and try 900. Right, that's the dip switches set. Hey, finally! Yep, Duron 900, we've finally seen more than 850 megahertz out of this board and whatnot, out of this setup. So yeah, it may not be stable at that, we'd have to run it for some time, some benchmarks, but it seems, from what we've done here, that our processor was the problem. The CPU was just not up to it by the looks of things. And first try at uh, 900 megahertz, not changed a thing other than the CPU, and as you can see, it's booted straight up. Hmm. So tell you what, just out of interest, uh, let's keep pushing this and see how high this one will go. Right, here's 950. This is booted up. Or has it booted up? Ah, it looks like it's crashed. It tried, it tried. Give it a reset, try it one more time. Nope, doesn't look like it's having it. So, um, it looks close. I, if we had some voltage options on this motherboard, we bet we could get 950 working. But, at least it shows that we went past the 850 from the previous processor. So, just out of interest, since it's on the desk, uh, I'm going to put uh, CPU number 3 in here. And we'll see if that does... Um, any better than uh, our original one. 
Okay, so here's the third CPU at 900. We hope. Yep, 900, that looks good. Let's try 950. Okay, oh, BIOS checks some error. Oh dear. Well, that's not like 950. Award boot block BIOS. Hmm. Well, I've never seen that before. I've got a flashing power, but a power LED as well. Wonderful. It's interesting that that CPU also seems to have uh, got to around this 950 mark and struggled. Maybe we're now starting to run into the limits of the motherboard. I don't know, but uh, anyway, at least this shows that um, the 850 MHz uh, overclock we're stuck at before with the first CPU is indeed down to the CPU and not something else. So there we go. The reason that we got that rather mediocre overclock in the overclocking build-off video. We had six things to try and working through we were able to determine what it was. First was the old rose tinted glasses, you know, was were we remembering correctly but uh, we found those articles and forum threads and whatnot that suggested these durons should give us better clocks. Second was the recapping of the motherboard, so put new capacitors on, that didn't make any difference. Third thing was uh, trying a different PSU, a new one, just in case these old ones weren't up to the job anymore. That didn't help. Number four was the cooling. Well, we checked the cooling. We verified that this heatsink and fan was keeping the processor cool, and it was. Jumping on to number six, trying a different motherboard. Well, the fact that those other couple of Duron 750s were able to run at more than 850 MHz showed that this motherboard was able to do that, so it wasn't the problem. Just to be on the safe side, I did bob the original Duron into a different motherboard and 850 MHz was all it would do on that as well. So that just leaves us with number 5. The fact that our original Duron, this little guy here with his two missing foam pads, turns out that 850 MHz, that's all this one's got left now. Whether or not it used to be able to do more than that uh, when it was new or not, I guess we'll never know, but... That's all it's got to give. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, a little bit of troubleshooting and testing made for something a bit different. If you did enjoy it, uh, drop us a thumbs up or a like, you know, a comment down below, all that kind of good stuff. But for now, I'm just going to say thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.